breaking news and the best live sport. This is BBC Five Live. Good morning. It's six o'clock. It's Five Live Breakfast on Tuesday morning with Rachel Bird and our top news story. This is BBC Five Live. And we begin with the BBC News now from Rob Watts. Wheelchair users will find out later if they take priority on buses in England and Wales. The Court of Appeal is deciding whether transport companies are legally obliged to give them space. It follows the case of Doug Pawley, who sued First Group because a woman wouldn't move her child's pushchair out of the way. His solicitor is Chris Fry. If the Court of Appeal uphold the decision, then it becomes binding. There'll be a right of action from any individual to obtain compensation and require there to be a policy change. But more importantly, it should just change the culture of the way in which disabled people are can access public transport. Ten past six. Now, here's something that I suspect will um, get many people going this morning. A debate about who should get priority on a bus, wheelchair users or pushchair users. Judges at the Court of Appeal will hear a case today which could change the way that transport companies deal with this issue. The bus operator first group is appealing a decision which ruled it acted unlawfully by failing to make sure disabled bays were kept free for those who need them. Now this is after wheelchair user Doug Pawley took the company to court back in 2012 when he was unable to board a bus to Leeds because a woman with a pushchair was already in the bay. The woman with the pushchair refused to move when the driver asked her to and I was unable to get on the bus so I missed it. I had to catch a later bus which ended up the other side of Leeds and I missed my train. It caused an hour's delay and also it affected my confidence. Charles Fernley is First Group's UK Bus Managing Director. He says that the appeal is the only way they can work out how to enforce its own policy. We need clarity in this situation. We need to know what powers the bus driver has and then we need to support our bus drivers to carry out their responsibilities. Joshua Rosenberg is a journalist and legal commentator. Morning, Joshua. Good morning, Rachel. So they say they want clarity. Do they, do they indicate which way they want the, the judges to, to rule on this one? I haven't heard that they have. Um, they thought that there would be a problem if they changed their policy. Their policy is first come, first come, first served. In other words, if the if the mother with the buggy gets on the bus before the, the man in the wheelchair, then she stays and the man in the wheelchair doesn't get on, as we heard from Doug Pawley. Uh, what the uh, part-time judge at Leeds County Court said uh, was uh, that Doug Pawley should have priority, first group should change its policy, uh, and the judge said that it was perfectly possible for the bus company to enforce that policy by simply changing its conditions of carriage and saying that instead of first come, first served, priority should be given to people in wheelchairs. Mm. It's difficult though, isn't it? Because if you have um, a mother or a father with a pushchair or a pram and a young baby sleeping and they are already in the bay and are required to get off at the next stop, before their journey is finished because a wheelchair user wants to use the space, you can also see how that might be unfair. Uh, You could see how that would be very difficult for people with buggies, and maybe there are more people with buggies on buses than there are in wheelchairs. Uh, What the uh, bus company said in evidence at the county court was uh, that if they make a request and the the passenger using the the space with a buggy refuses, there's nothing that they can do uh, to take the, the, the passenger with the buggy off the bus. But it was pointed out in court that some transport companies, for example, Lothian Buses and Transport for London, have adopted a priority policy with teeth, uh, which is uh, not just that uh, somebody with a buggy was asked to move from a wheelchair space, but was required to do so. And that puts quite a lot of onus then on the bus driver, doesn't it? It does, and that may explain why uh, First Group are challenging this. It it leads to confrontations, and that's difficult, and it delays the bus and so on. Uh, But the uh, judge said that it was quite clear the Equality Act 2010, which is what Doug Pawley brought his case under, was designed to give priority to people in wheelchairs over people with buggies. That's why the law was passed by Parliament. And if that meant um, pushing uh, mothers with buggies off uh, buses occasionally, well, that's what Parliament intended. Yeah, a first group say their policy is to clearly ask other customers to make way for wheelchair passengers, to rely on the goodwill of other bus users, I suppose. But that's not always going to be possible. That's what the county court judge said was not good enough. He said that that policy uh, was what the law refers to as a provision criterion 
or practice. That put wheelchair users at a substantial disadvantage. Uh, Mr. Pauly said it put him at a disadvantage compared with people who are not wheelchair users. And the bus company said, well, you're not at a disadvantage compared with buggy users who wouldn't be allowed a, a space on the bus if the space was taken by somebody in a wheelchair. But the judge said that was wrong. It wouldn't give wheelchair users the protection that Parliament intended. There were reasonable steps that First Group could have taken to avoid disadvantaging Mr. Pauly. They could have required priority. That would have been a reasonable practice to have adopted. And the bus failure, bus company's failure to adopt that policy resulted in a detriment to Mr. Pauly. He missed his bus, as he's told you, and he was awarded £5,500 compensation. And that's what the bus company is challenging before three judges in the Court of Appeal today. Joshua Rosenberg, thank you very much. It'd be very interesting to hear the outcome of that later and masses of response. We mentioned it on Twitter last night. I'll read a few of those and already on the text this morning. Uh, Peter says this, a disabled charities campaign for equal treatment. So it should be first come, first served. Neither should get priority. Jen says this, you can take a baby out of a buggy. It's not always possible for a wheelchair user. Wheelchair takes priority, surely. And lots of people making that point. I will just say, imagine the scenario where somebody gets on and they have a newborn baby in a pram. Some of these prams are huge these days. A stack of shopping underneath, dismantling a pram, getting a newborn baby out, removing the stack of shopping. It's not quite as straightforward as you might think, is it? Uh, another one here. Simple test. Which is worse to see denied? I've seen both. Worse to see a wheelchair denied than a pushchair. And this one from Stuart. I'm a driver and I'm happy with first come, first serve. The disability laws throw a spanner in the works. He says, and Joe says this, I've bussed it for seven years. I see wheelchair users maybe once every few months. Buggies every day, though. If there's no room, then get the next bus. Well, what do you think? 85058. You can tweet us, of course, at BBC Five Live. It's 616. But the story that you're all really discussing this morning is this debate, wheelchair versus buggy. I mean, it's not really quite like that. But First Group, the bus company, is appealing a decision today against... Uh, the idea that wheelchair users should have absolute priority on a bus. Their wheelchair space, uh, they say, should be used on a first-come, first-served basis, but they do ask people using buggies to show goodwill if a wheelchair user comes on the bus and move accordingly. Uh, th the overall consensus seems to be, of course, wheelchair users should get priority, but this whole issue of using buggies on a bus, the problem is these days that they are so enormous and unwieldy and generally require an engineering degree to dismantle. It's not like it was in the old days, and perhaps it should be. When did it become the norm, says Ian in Portsmouth, to get on a bus with a buggy up? When I took my young son on two buses to visit my mother, the buggy was down and the babe was in arms ready to get on. And lots of other people saying things like this, that you should only be able to get on a bus if you can fold up the buggy, one of those umbrella-style ones, and actually carry the baby on board. Uh, Chris says this, my best friend is a wheelchair user and he gets very little goodwill from other passengers. London buses are very selfish. He goes to Newcastle and everyone moves. They also have two spaces, which he says is a pretty simple solution. Good morning. It's 7.20. Right. Okay, this has uh, got a massive reaction from our listeners this morning. A case will be heard at the Court of Appeal today, which could mean that transport companies have to change the way they serve disabled customers. First group are challenging a ruling which said it acted unlawfully when a wheelchair user couldn't get on the bus because a mother with a pushchair was already using the disabled bay. Now we'll speak to the man involved in a moment. Uh, he's here, here with me. Um, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it's quite a story. Uh, but first we've been asking people in Gateshead who should get priority on public transport. Wheelchairs. Always. I think, like, buggies should have a priority. There's yes. a lot of mums who don't drive or anything and then, you know, need to get back and forth to school and stuff like that. I think there should be enough room for both. We've just gotten a bus over to uh, Washington um, and it only had space for wheelchair and that was it. Personally, I would, I would get off and let the wheel wheelchair on, but if it's cold and the baby's crying, I think I would probably stay on the bus and just try and squash on as best you can. I think the bus is absolutely ridiculous. The bus drivers just usually pass by you. And if there's two farms on already, they don't let wheelchairs on. Well, the Equality Act 2010, and it was designed to give equality to people in wheelchairs, is on your side, Doug. Uh, Doug Pauly, the man who took first group to court in 2012. And it's uh, 
Uh, that ruling, the com- his ruling that the company are appealing against today. It's um, it's quite a story. Mm-hmm. It's just quite a day for you, isn't it? It is. It's quite a day for me. I'm yeah. very nervous, but very excited. You're, very, you're not allowed to say anything in court, are you? No, that's right. I am fantastic lawyers and Unity Law and um, the barristers and QC have to speak on my behalf. You can't scream from the gallery. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't well, think it would go down too well. What happened? Well, I was trying, going to go and see my parents who live the other side of the Pennine. So I was going to catch a bus and a train. I'd arranged to do so um, in advance. And I went and catch the bus and there was already somebody in the wheelchair space with a push chair. Um, so the driver turned around and asked if she would move. And she refused, basically. And so I wasn't allowed on the bus. So I missed the bus. I had to catch the latest bus. Missed my train. Um, I was an hour late, but also it was a culmination of a number of such events. Not for me so much as for other people, although there were, I have had various accessibility problems with bus transport. Um, but I know that lots of disabled people who've had problems where they've been unable to get on the bus because the wheelchair space has been occupied, you know. Mm. Um, I know that different companies enforce this uh, far more Lothian buses and transport for London have a policy whereby the person is required to move, although there's a big question there because you're inevitably going to have a confrontation. Yes. And, you know, the driver's going to find that difficult. Um, What should... uh, Firstly, was was it confrontational, the atmosphere? It always feels like a confrontation. You know, whenever I'm going up to catch a bus, I'm always scanning to see if there is a wheelchair um, space available, whether mm. there's already a wheelchair user on, because there can only fit one wheelchair user on. So well, that's a bit stressful if you've got yeah. to get to be. Yeah, and then you're looking in the queue, and, you know, and it's awful, but I feel like I have to jump ahead of somebody with a pushchair, you know, so that I can get on the bus. You know, put, people with pushchairs can fold their pushchairs and get on. Um, I know it can be difficult, but ultimately, I can't get on unless I have that space. Mm. So if somebody is in that space, this particular example or another example, with a pushchair, with a very young child, with a load of shopping, what should they do? Where should they go? Yes, I agree. I mean, I, I'm fully up for public transport being for everybody, including mothers and fathers with kids. um, And their buses should be as well designed as possible to meet Mm -hmm. everybody's needs, including people with pushchairs. And it is difficult. I completely understand this. I mean, it's it's being portrayed as wheelchair users versus pushchair users. I don't don't think it needs to be that kind of confrontation. It's not. It should should be possible for everybody to get on. But ultimately, at the end of the day, Parliament has put in this law which gives disabled people rights. Um, Unfortunately, it doesn't give mothers and fathers the same rights, you know, and it's because people in the 90s, uh, wheelchair users, other disabled people, changed themselves to buses and protested that the wheelchair space was put in mm. so if it's if the wheelchair space is available then um, by all means it's good to see anybody using it including people with push chairs or server but if a disabled person needs it and a non-disabled person is using it then i think it's absolutely clear that uh, um, it must be made available And there's going to be a big protest today, isn't there? Apparently so. Transport for All have organised a protest outside the courts, yes. That that first group are actually, interestingly, they say they're seeking clarification on this. What do you make of that? Um, I don't see why it needs clarification. I don't know why they're bringing this to court at all, to be honest. I mean, other companies, as you've mentioned, like Stagecoach, say, in their conditions of carriage, if a disabled person needs the wheelchair space and there's a non-disabled person in it, they are required to move, and then that's enforced if necessary. And the stronger signage, so everybody knows. But what's how happening. is it? How is it to be enforced? This is the problem because you know some people can mm. dig in, can't they? They do. The bus drivers are used to dealing with conflicts. This is the thing. I, I'd hate to be a bus driver. I've got I've got every respect for them <laughs> because not only do they have to drive Pe- the bus, peacekeepers. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's it. Yeah. I mean, they'll have drunk people on the buses, people smoking, people um, eating takeaway food, people breaking rules in other ways, uh, fighting, and they're trained to deal with that conflict. And, and to me... This is the least of their problems. But yeah. <laughs> maybe 
Yeah, yeah. And, and if there was a clear ruling that said that you know wheelchair users have priority, then they, this this can back them up. Yeah, it's a difficult issue. There's the text here. We have twin baby boys. If my wife's taking the buggy onto a bus, how's she supposed to hold them both while also putting it down, hand them over to the nearest stranger? <laughs> Just finally. Mm -hmm. That's the other side of it. Most people hugely supportive of your position. Uh -huh. um, the, the other side of it, have, have you seen, I mean, you say you've experienced situations like this before, and may, may, maybe many of your friends who are wheelchair users have as well. Yes. Um, is there sometimes unpleasantness? Uh, yes, it, it can work the other way too. I mean, there is room for me and a buggy on the wheel, in the wheelchair space often. And I... Um, was in the wheelchair space and somebody with a buggy wanted to get on and the driver wouldn't let them on um, because I was on there, you know, um, and unless they could fold their buggy. And she explained that um, she had been on the, the bus many times with me before and we fitted, but still they wouldn't let her on. So I complained to the bus company about that. Yeah. Mm. But it's always it's, it's more the fear and of this potential conflict and confrontation every time I get on a bus. Plus, you're sat facing the back of the bus, so you, this is that confrontation straight away, and that you're staring at each other. You oh know. God, yeah. <laughs> Listen, it's really, uh, really good to talk to you. It's going to be fascinating as to uh, what comes out of this, and as I say, it's got a, a big uh, reaction from our, our listeners. So, so, Doug. I can't say good luck because I have to stay impartial, but I'm sure you'll have an interesting day. <laughs> Thank you very much. There's Doug Pauley, the man who took first group to court in 2012, and it's his ruling the company are appealing against. Right, well, Sally Whittle writes the blog whosthemummy.co.uk. Good morning, Sally. Good morning. Right, let's put you in the situation. Uh, you are there with your buggy on the bus and you're shopping in the buggy and these buggies are pretty big and it's a real kerfuffle, as you well know, uh, folding them up and so forth. And you've got an infant, very young child. So um, someone in a wheelchair comes on, you've taken the bay, what do you do? I think it really depends. And, and I think that's really my issue with this case is I think that what we're looking at is a situation that's really about common sense and courtesy. I don't think we necessarily need to have hard and fast rules. If I've got a baby and the baby is awake and the baby is happy and I have a seat on the bus, then I'm usually pretty happy um, to take down a pushchair and to hold my baby. But there are all sorts of circumstances where it just might not be appropriate. If I'm standing up, I don't feel it's very safe to be carrying my baby, actually. And they have a right to be safe on the bus just as anybody else does and I think there are lots of instances where for whatever reason maybe the pushchair doesn't collapse or if you've got all that shopping that's in the basket you know that you stuff under there while you're trying to get out of the house in the morning it just may not be practical to collapse it and if you do nine times out of ten there's nowhere to put it because buses these days have very little in the way of storage and and while there are some instances and some places in the country where okay you can get off the bus and maybe there'll be another one in five minutes there are lots of parts of the country where there may not be another bus for an hour or two hours or maybe even longer than that. So I think it really is one of those situations that you can't make one hard and fast rule. You've really got to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. But you'd say in the circumstances that you outlined there that it's impossible and there's nowhere else to sit and you've got a very young child, you've got lots of shopping and you, it's a big buggy, you can't unfold it. You, you, uh, you would uh, stand to tolerate a situation whereby someone in a wheelchair could not actually get on the bus. I think I wouldn't feel great about it, but I think that in that sort of circumstance, if there if the bus is full, mm. then the bus is full. I think that certainly there should be a quality of access to everybody, and I don't think that in that situation, if you've got a young infant that for whatever reason needs to remain in the pushchair and the bus is full, then the reality is I don't think it's appropriate to make somebody get off the bus to allow another passenger on. It, it surely should be that everybody is treated equally. Yes. Uh, first come, first served basically i think so and i think in most instances you know mums and dads who've got young children you're going to squish up you're going to make accommodation for any other passenger you would hope but i just think there are rare occasions where it's just not appropriate for whatever reason it isn't safe to take the baby out of the pushchair and in that case i think that everybody should be treated equally and in that situation really it should be first come first what does equal mean i mean the equality act 2010 was designed to give designed to give equality to people in wheelchairs which of course means you know allowing uh, and making the effort to make it possible for those people to uh, people in wheelchairs and uh, to, to get on buses and to, to be able to do that practically and to make it possible some companies have required preference for people in wheelchairs as well 
Yeah, I think so. And it, but it depends where you are in the country, what the policy is. I yeah. know certainly we've lived in different ends of the country that have different policies. And if the policy of the bus company is that that, sh that space is accessible to people using pushchairs or people using wheelchairs, then I don't think really it, it's fair to tar those, those mums with the brush of, oh, they're terribly selfish and they mm. just don't want to be inconvenienced. Well, actually, you know what? If you've been up all night with a baby or you've got some kind of medical issue that means it isn't safe for you to stand and hold a baby then actually i think the bus companies are obliged to accommodate that well, in the same way yeah. that they're Redesign obliged the to buses, accommodate basically. people with disability yeah absolutely i more, think we should be if a case like this brings people attention with and, and people in wheelchairs let me just give you let me give you a couple of texts well i'm sure the bus companies will be delighted about that expense but to get, let's give me a uh, give you a couple of texts it's not just wheelchair users that are affected by people with buggies my blind wife and her guide dog are often asked to move by people with push chairs it's from jamie in darlington and here's another one modern push chairs can be taken down and folded in seconds the driver or a passenger could have helped uh, the parent take the chair down store it in a luggage area or seat selfish parents that's phil I think there's some lovely ideals around how the world would work and if you're a mum or a dad with a child in a pushchair, that's not always the case. I certainly have never had a bus driver help me to collapse a pushchair. Not all pushchairs can be put down in seconds. Some of them put, you know, complex origami to shame. If you've got <laughs> things in the shopping basket underneath and you've got a sleeping baby and a parent facing pushchair, those things are impossible to put down on your own and particularly in a crowded environment like a bus. It actually is really hard work and if you you're trying to hold a baby and if you've got an older child at the same time how do you keep everybody safe in a moving vehicle i think it's a really tricky issue yes and it it's is. just mm. you can't just throw you know oh it's selfishness because actually it's not often it's just about trying to keep your child safe it's a moral maze and isn't it just yes. <laughs> ain't that the truth <laughs> that's why we've had so many texts and tweets about it thank you very much indeed sally thank you very much uh, sally whittle uh, writes the blog who's the mummy.com UK at 820.